Okay, one more tiny video before we go on to actually parameterizing a curve is to talk about how many parameters do we need for a curve? The answer to this question is to do with measurement. A curve has length, which is a one-dimensional measurement, so it needs one parameter. We can go off positively or negatively, but only in along its length, so it needs one parameter. So what would be the extension of this sentence? A surface has area, which is two-dimensional measurement, so it will need two parameters. And a solid has volume, which is a three-dimensional measurement, so it will need three parameters. So the, the way we measure the, the thing we're looking at is how many parameters. Curve has length, that's a one-dimensional measurement, so it needs one parameter. So that's a key thing that we're writing in this particular video, is a curve one parameter. The next thing is that the number of components is the dimension where the curve lives. So we need one parameter for a curve, but how many components we have is where the curve lives. What does that mean? A curve that lives in the plane, is in 2D, has two components, X and Y has an interval where it starts and ends, but there's only two components here. The extension is a curve in 3D has three components, and a curve in 4D would have four components. So the second thing we want to remember here, the number of components determines where the curve lives. What's number three? We just want to remember that the interval of the parameter determines the direction of the curve. If orientation of the curve is important to us, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, the start point will be T start, and we will find X, Y, and Z, or X, Y for it, and, it, and the end point, the T end, will give us the end point. Okay, let's look at an example. I like this cool example. I got bored with other little ones. So this one is S of T equals, and here's vector notation, 2 cosine squared of t, 3 sine of t, 2t, and t is from 0 to 4. So this would be your thinking, and that's why we're writing it by hand. I say to myself, number of parameters equals, I look, I see 1, t. I say curve. If I saw 2, I would say surface, etc. Now I say number of components. I say one comma two comma three. And I say the curve lives in 3D. So this is a 3D curve. And just for the fun of it, before we go actually go look at this cool looking curve, we cannot see T, the parameter on our curve. So we have to kind of find our start and end point if we need orientation. So we have start point, t equals zero. So what do we have for our coordinates? Two, notice that these are coordinates of a point, cosine squared of zero, three sine of zero, and two times zero. Well, cosine of zero is one, squared is one, so this is two times one, two, sine of zero is zero, and two times zero is zero. So our start point is at two, zero, zero. And let's do our end point. So that's t equal to four pi. So we have two cosine squared of four pi, three sine of four pi, and two times four pi. This is again one, so we have two. This is again zero, so we have zero, and here we have eight pi. So we're looking for the one that's sitting on zero as the start point, and the one that's sitting way up on eight pi, which is what, approximately 24, 25, something around there, as our end point. Let's go see the graph. So we remember that what we want to do is graph this cool curve, and we saw that it was a curve because it has one parameter, 
and it's a curve in space because it has three components and its start point is 200, zero, zero, its end point is 208 pi. So let's look at it. So here we are in the free program Sage. It does very cool 3D graphs. We declare our variable, i.e. parameter t. We define our 3D curve s parametrically and our interval for t. Let's match it up. s equals vector two parentheses, the first component right here, two times cosine of t squared, and then a comma, three times sine of t, comma, two times t, and both parentheses. Hit enter, t1 equals zero, semicolon, t2 equals four times pi. So there's our interval. And let's scroll down here. We're going to graph this function. And so let's plot c, that's a comment. C equals parametric plot. There's our function S. There's our parameter and our interval. And then some fancy things to make it look nice. And I always like to have references, so I'm putting in an X, Y, Z axis. So let's make sure the X axis is red, Y axis is blue, and the Z is green. Let's go see it. Here it comes. So isn't this a cool looking curve? I love this curve. So this is the X, the Y, and the Z. And let's move it around a little bit so we can see it. It's coming around like this, but let's see it. There we go. You can see it coming around like this and like this. And we can look down on it, see what it looks like this way and this way. Very fun program to work with. And it's free and certainly no harder to use than Mathematica. Here you can see that this point is way up almost at z equal to 27, 28, okay? And this point right down here is at z equal to zero. So we have to think a little bit about which is the first point and which is the end point if we want to orient this curve. Let's get it in original position. So now we can see that this point is x equal to two, y equal to zero, and z equal to zero. So that's our start point. And then we're coming up this way if we need our curve to tell us its orientation, up this way, and our end point is at the same x and y coordinate to zero, but now the z coordinate is up in space at eight pi. So our point is, remember that a curve needs one parameter and that the number of components tells us the dimension in which the curve lives, and the interval tells us its orientation.